paper rounding, ladies and gentlemen. Rounding we've done before, so we won't spend a lot of time on it. But remember, rounding is, you know, just getting close. Because sometimes we don't need to know exact numbers, and it's easier to work with numbers that aren't exact. You know, for example, I asked you how much your shirt costs. You'd probably say it's $30. You probably don't tell me it's $31.50 or whatever it is. Um, when we talk about rounding, let me throw a number out here. Let's say I have 7,826. Okay. When you are asked to round a number, they have to tell you what you're rounding to. For example, let me say, let me do this. Write this down. Round to, and we'll say the nearest. And I'm going to put a little hole in there because we're going to do a, a, a group of numbers. Let's say we're rounding to the nearest 10, rounding to the nearest 100, rounding to the nearest 1,000. those three. Uh, one, two, and three. Here is your thought process when you are rounding these numbers here. When you round to the nearest ten, it's like you're counting by tens, and you have to think about a number line, and this, you don't have to do this for all these, but this is basically what you're doing. You, are ha you start at 7,820, because this is in the tens place, and the next 10 would be 7,830. You know that this number falls between those two, you know, heaven forbid I asked you to count the 10s to 7,830, but it would take a while, but that's what it would be. And you have to think about where would this number fall between those two? Well, if you split it in half, what number is that? 7,825, so that 7,826 is closer, is over on this side, should probably be about right there. So you know it is closer to, 7,830. Now rather than drawing the whole number line every time, what is the dead giveaway as to whether, by the way, we never subtract a number when we round. We either round it up or it stays the same. If I'm looking at 7,826, how did I know this is 7,830 without having to go through all of this sort of stuff there, Victoria? Because 7,826 so what number actually is the giveaway number? Six. Yeah, the number next to the number you're rounding. If that number is five or bigger, you round up. You go up. If it's four or less, it stays the same. You never subtract, it stays the same. So that's rounded to the nearest ten. If I were rounding this to the nearest hundred, my two choices are either it's 7,800 or 7,900. And remember, it's the number next to the hundreds place that tells you if you go up or stay the same. And if I'm looking at the number next to the hundreds place, this is a two. I don't worry about the six, that doesn't matter. It's only the number next to the one I'm rounding. So what is my answer? Am I going to round it up to 7,900 or is it going to stay 7,800, Kelly? It's going to stay 7,800. It's going to stay at 7,800. Same thing is true if I'm rounding to the nearest thousands place. If I'm counting by thousands, my choice is it's either going to go down to 7,000 or it's going to go up to 8,000 or stay 7,000 go up to 8,000. In this case, it's going to be what, Jacob? Is it going to be 7,000 or 8,000? 8,000. Why is that? Because of what number? Eight. Yes, because this eight is five or bigger, that means that is going to be eight thousand. What if I rounding that to the nearest ten thousand? <coughs> what digits in the ten thousands place? Well, I don't have them, but it would be a zero if I did. If I look to the number next to it, what would that be rounded to the nearest ten thousand, Sam? 10,000? Uh, 10, it would be 10,000. Again, I think we've done enough rounding that I don't really need to beat um, this little light of mine. So take out a blank piece of paper because we're not done yet. Along with rounding, today we're also talking about estimating. Estimating. Again, 
estimate is, is basically using rounding to get close. Using rounding to get close. And we sometimes people run into trouble with this. Let's see if we can get to that. But let's just say here. If the direction said to estimate the sum, estimate the sum of 4, 6, 7, and 3, 1, 2, 4, and 67, and 312. 457 and 312. Now, let me tell you what it's not telling you to do. And this is what I see people do. And they're like, well, I don't know if I did it. Okay, it is not asking you to add 467 and 312 and get 779 and then round that answer and say, oh, that's close to 800. That is not what it's asking you to do. Okay? If that was what it was asking you to do, it would say, add and round your answer. What they're asking you to do is make these two numbers so easy that it's a really quick mathematical problem. So you round before you add as opposed to rounding them after you add. So you'd say, oh, well, 467, you know, that's 500, 312, that's 300, and boom, 800 is your answer. Okay, it is 800 either way, but this way you're just going through a whole lot more godly good than you really need to. You know, you need to do that. It's a little like going to the store. You know, Sam's going to the store and he buys a pair of shoes for $75 and 15 cents, and then he buys a pair of, I don't know, whatever, a, a Cubs jersey, because they're on sale now, because they're terrible, yep. you know, for $12.86, okay, and you're asked to estimate if he has enough money, you know, by the way, you can kind of estimate whatever works for you, I, I would... You know, and you want to estimate where it's easy, but you also get as accurate as possible. I would probably say, you know, I might even go, this is $75, and this is $10, and say my estimate is $85. You could do 13, because 75 and 13 is not bad, you can get 88. Technically, sixth grade, there's no really, really wrong answer when you estimate, because estimating is just getting close as long as you change those numbers. But, you know, you want to make your life as easy as possible. So if you, a lot of you raise your hand and say, well, I got 85 and I got 88, I'll say, well, you're both right. You just, you know, estimating you get to use your best judgment as to that. But what I don't want you to do is add them up together and then round your answer, because that's not what they're asking you to do, Victoria. Well, like, how do you know whether to do 467 or 300? How do you know either go 470 or 500? Well, again, that, that again is your choice. You know, it depends on how accurate you want to be. You know, I would pick the easier one or two and just go 500 because you're right, you can pick either one of those. Um, let's see what question they ask you about that. Uh, you know, if you look at, look at page 16, or page 83 in the book. Right. Look at example four. That's a good case in point there. If you look at page 83, it says, Stephanie stopped at the store to pick up a few items. She had $10 and a couple of quarters. She needs to buy milk for $2.29, her favorite cereal for $4.78, and some orange juice for $2.42. Well, if you're rounding those, if you're estimating how much money she'll, she'll need, $2.29, I would probably go with $2, right? The so $4.78 is probably 5 bucks. And the other one, 242, you know, 42 is kind of close or whatever, you know, I would probably go, if you really round it, you go down to two and you'd say, well, she needs nine dollars. Now, if you keep rounding everything down, in the end, you may not get close enough and she might not have enough money because, you know, you keep rounding 40 cents down, 40 cents down, 40 cents down. When you go to the store, if you're actually trying to round stuff, you should always round up no matter what, just a way to make sure you have enough money, whether it's like... You know, you could have rounded this to three dollars, that to five dollars, and that to three dollars, and you'd end up with eleven dollars, just to be safe. But you don't have to. Like I said, rounding and estimating is kind of 
up to your own personal kind of preference on that. So 